getting started here. Uh, a moment ago, I just loaded up my, uh, I just loaded up the game on my device, and the big idea was that it's uh, we're dealing with the music now. So I turned it down for a moment, but mine is playing music. And then if I exit the app and I and I come back to it, it plays the music again. But the problem is it starts the music over every time. So that's where we left off. We wanted basically to pause the music wherever we leave off and then for it to come back. So we'll go back to scene zero, frame one, go to your actions. Let's load up your actions panel. And we've got at the end, Okay, so at the end is where we were getting all of this set up at about line 23. We set ourselves up to um, create a variable that will hold the music. That's home muse. Then we had home muse play, which is a special variable of type sound channel, which will let us control the, basically the pausing and the playing of the music. We said, okay, play the music, the background music from the beginning and play it 10 times. So in case someone really, really, really wants to look at your title screen, the music will keep playing 10 times. Uh, then, we had, then we had just created a variable called home muse pause, set it to zero. This is what's gonna keep track of uh, where, how far along is the music playing. The way we're going to do this pause is for animate to keep track how long has the music played, how many milliseconds. And then when we exit the game, take note of that. We're on millisecond 1258. So then when we restart the game, it'll say start playing the soundtrack from millisecond 1258. And that's what we started to set up over here. What happens when you load the game, events.activate, and what happens when you exit the game, event.deactivate. So we have these event handlers that wait for the game to load or to stop. And notice when the game starts, here's the play again from the beginning. And that's what we're going to change. We're keeping track of this variable that will eventually change. You've played 1,200 milliseconds. We're going to restart, start playing at 1,200 milliseconds instead of the beginning. When we exit the app, stop playing. But before stop playing, how far along are we in time? So the first thing we'll do is we need to keep track of where the game pauses. So here under deactivate home or stop home music line 43. Before we stop the music, so give yourself one line above that, line 43. We're going to say home muse pause equal to home muse play. dot position you can make a note check the position time in milliseconds of the currently playing music and store that value in the home muse pause variable. So we're about to deactivate. We're about to exit the game. Let's first check at what point in time is the music at? Position. So home play muse, home muse play. 
is the container, the variable that is holding the music, and the music's playing along. We check what's the position. We store that in the variable, home, muse, pause. Then we stop the music, and we want to use this value elsewhere. So here's something new. We've had these functions that do something. And we've had them set to colon void. They didn't return anything. They just did something. Here we need to change this. Check the position of the music and return the value, not a void. So let's change line 42. Instead of colon void, change that to number, capital N. Very important here. We're saying check the position of the music and we're going to get that value back out of the function so colon void and then after we stop the music we say return home muse pause so this function does something and returns the value and then it pops out of the function and we can use it throughout the app if we didn't do that whatever the position value was here would have sort of stayed stuck in the function. We would have only been able to use that variable in the function. Each function is sort of like its own little world. And it, it matters more other times. We haven't, it hasn't had to matter other times, but here it definitely matters. We want to get that value out of the function so we can use it throughout the app. Make sure on line 42 you change that to colon number. Then we have the new assignment here. We've assigned the position to the variable. We still have the stop. And then we have return home. Let's make a note that what that does is returns the value inside home muse. Pause. Position of music to the rest of the app. Without it, the variable would only be usable in this function. To the end of my word, to the end of my comment, Sure. To the end of the comment, it doesn't matter, but it's notes for yourself. Sure. All right, so now we're seeing, um, again, functions are little bundles of code that can do many things. This function is activated once we exit the app. It checks the position of the music, it stops the music, and it returns a value. So functions, bundles of code. The reason that we're popping out that value then is so that now we can use it up on line uh, 37. Line 37 of the play music, the first time when we first play the, the game, we'll obviously start the music from the zero with position. Zero milliseconds, that's line 37. Play the music starting at zero milliseconds. We're using this one to keep track of what position is it currently in. So let's replace zero with the return value of home muse pause. So on line 37, Instead of it saying play zero, replace that with play home muse pause. And we can add a comment saying start the music from the current position of the music. Stored in home 
news pause, which we got from the function stop home music. Okay, this, uh, this should be enough. Uh, the idea here is now we can test it. Remember, have your headphones plugged in. I'm going to run this. I'm going to publish it on my real device. If you haven't seen it in the menu, there's a keyboard shortcut to publish. Shift, Alt, F12. Shift, Alt, F12 publishes right to your device. Well, after you've set the P12 password at least once. Should also work if you do control enter uh, the emulator loads up and then you click somewhere else that deactivates it you click back again and it should continue so let me test it on mine one moment let me test mine As soon as this box goes away, I can show the code again. Okay, here we go. So it's loading up on my device. Just one moment, so I hear the music. I exit the music. I come back to the game. It's a, it was the exact same moment. Okay, so for example, there was a little high-pitched tone at the moment, and then I go back to it. It was at the same point. same point. It should not be restarting. That's the whole point of, of our code right here. Here's the big example. See how the music changes completely? And then I go back home and then I load it again. It's still in that part of the music. Here's my code so far. If uh, you had a little trouble, call me over. Does your music work?
We still need some other code for other things, but let me just check if we're on the right track at the moment. Yeah, that's happening on mine. That's fine for the moment. We, we need some other code. All right, so if you beta test it a little bit more, um, there's a point here where if you play through the game and you get to the ending scene and then it's quit or play again and you play again, the music stops. That should be fine. We have other code that we still need to, to set up. But uh, if this works, then we'll move on because we want to have different music playing on different scenes, and we want and we have to keep track of all of that. What music plays when? So did that work for everyone before moving on? Okay. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to do something very similar to what we have here on any scene where we want new music. So we'll do some copying and pasting to then change a couple of things. So basically we need to copy from about line 23 where we start to create the variables that hold music all the way down to the end where we've got the return of the home pause. So in my case, 23 to 53. The, those chunk, that chunk of code at the very end sets up our soundtrack and sets up a way to, um, to start playing the music. So let's copy that. We'll need to modify it, but this will give us some starting points. So we'll copy that from about line 40, uh, 23 to 43. And then let's go to uh, scene... Uh, scene 2 gate. Let's go to scene 2 gate actions, frame 1. And paste it at the very end. So what I've got so far, what we have so far on the scene, scene gate, we have stop when we get to the scene, we have the event handler to try to open the front door, and that's it. That was, that was from a while ago. We just pasted this stuff in right now. Okay, so one of the first things I want to change here is uh, we have this very powerful command, sound mixer stop all. That stops all of the sound playing, no matter what sound it is. That's one of the first things I want. I don't want the home, I don't want the title music playing anymore. I want the music playing of, you know, screen one, level one, whatever. So let's move this, let's cut and paste it, let's move it from where it currently is to the very beginning before stop. So we're going to cut that as well as its comment and move it to the very top. Now the comment, I'll change that to say uh, stop any previous music. first trick here is if we're going to change music from scene to scene, like for example the game over scene, we want to stop any other music playing first. Then we have the stop which stops the timeline. What we need to change then are the items down here. We're not going to play the home music anymore, we're going to play the first level music. Uh, we haven't imported that one to the library yet. I think we've only got one of the soundtracks. Let's see. In the library... Yeah, I just have 4 dash at the moment. And I've got... Um, in the folder, in our music folder, we just need to pick which one we want. I think there was a cool, scary 
background music on one of these. Nope, that's not scary. Nope, intrigue is not scary. Okay, yeah, I think that one, that one's good. Uh, that one's pretty scary, and then it kind of changes throughout it, and it gets even scarier. So, yeah, they named it pretty well. All right, so we. We change it. Not yet. We need to first import. Let's import the It's Coming MP3 into your project. So go to File, Import to Library. File menu, import to library, and we will get It's Coming. So then it's in our library, and we can name these things whatever we want. The linkage, right? The instance name, we called it Home Muse. I want to call this one like Main Muse or Scary Muse or whatever. I want to call it something so that I know what it is when I write it in the code. So first of all, to get the music to work, remember we have to add linkage. We have to add an instance name, so to speak. Double click the icon of it's coming in your library so we can change a couple of things. So double click it's coming. Then you get this window here and switch to action script. We're going to say we're going to export this so that it's usable via code, so export. It's called a scary muse. Scary underscore muse. That's the name we're going to use when we set up our variable to play the scary music. It could be called level one when you're working on your own. You could call it level one, level two. You could call it scene, you know, scene hallway three, whatever. These names can be whatever you want. You can even leave what originally was there, although I think it's too much. I'd rather have the shorter names. Click OK, and it might pop up. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, we want to do this. Uh, just turn on the don't show me this anymore, and then click OK. I know I'm going to do this several times. You don't have to show me. <coughs> So we'll turn the check mark on and click OK. Now all of our sound effects or soundtracks have linkage. So in our code, this is what we're going to change it. This is the code that was there for the home music, home, home scene music. So where we've got it saying home underscore muse, line 15 or so that is scary muse and where it says new home muse that's where it'll say scary muse so this is setting ourselves up let's use the other mp3 in a variable this should not be home muse anymore scary muse scary muse play equal to scary muse dot play we need to keep track of when to pause the music. So, scary news pause. You see that idea? We naming, we're naming these things in a consistent way so that we make changes and hopefully make them quickly. So, scary news. We have then now scary news play, which is equal to scary news dot play. And we've got Scary Muse pause. Uh, actually, yeah, Scary Muse play, Scary Muse pause. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be pretty easy once you understand what's going on here and you want to add new music anywhere throughout your project, it's going to be this sort of thing, copy and paste over and over. You need your music, you need the linkage, then you may set up your variables. Next, we're going to have the same thing here. If we want the music to stop playing, the main music, when we exit the game, we need this thing about wait for it to activate, wait for it to deactivate. We do have to change some of these names. So 
So now, native application, activate. It's not function play home music anymore. What is it now? Function play scary music. Perfect. I was about to write perfect. <laughs> scary music. So if we're saying once we act once we activate the game, play the scary music, then we need the function on the next line to say function is play scary music. set to play the, the, the home scene music. We have a function to play the main game music, scary music. Here, this should make sense, what you're about to do. We're not dealing with the home music anymore. We're not trying to start to play the home music anymore. We are dealing with scary muse play. That's a variable that is storing scarymuse.play. And it will start at scarymuse pause. Next one here, exactly the same. You see the idea. We just change the details of the music. So on the next function, we deal with that part. Once we deactivate the game, at the end we're going to run the function stop scary music. So line 31, function stop scary music. Remember to mind your capitalization and all of that. I, I think for some of us it'll be easier just to keep everything lowercase. I see a lot of people forgetting uppercase, lowercase. If you're, if you're one of those people that's forgetting about uppercase, lowercase, just keep it all lowercase. When you make up your own functions and your own variables, you choose what you call them. So if you're having trouble memorizing your capitalization, keep it all lowercase. Next line, then, it's a definition of the function stop scary music. You should figure out what you need to do here. Play. Get the play position of the scary music stored in the pause scary music variable and return scary music pause value. So you'll see it's repetitive, but it's an easy kind of repetitive, which should make sense. Okay, this uh, should be enough now. Save it and run it. And the point here is that you should have been hearing the main soundtrack and then the then you go to the gate, you start the game and a new soundtrack starts. The old one should that should have then cut off. And that new soundtrack plays, and when you exit the game, it stops, and when you come back, it starts again. So let's run it, let's see what happens. When, I, uh, when we have the time to work on your own project, uh, I remind you, uh, go over to YouTube. Everyone here probably has a YouTube account. 
uh, in your creator screen at the top right corner when you click on your icon you go to creator studio right there is a listing of, a, of thousands of free music choices I got all of these examples of music out of that so it'd be nice that you can use a famous piece of music but I wouldn't especially if you're going to uh, publish this game for real especially to sell it you don't want to use someone else's music but I'll get back to that in a moment so I've got the main title music playing I click start the old one stopped the new one is playing that stuff still plays I'm gonna do a little breaking and entering hallway I think the soundtrack works really well okay I'm gonna exit so I went back to my home screen the music cut out I go back to the app it's at the same point you should not start over oh actually the other one's also playing okay we'll fix that one right now so the other one is still playing if you listen carefully the home music is still playing okay so we'll fix that We'll fix that in one moment. Uh, Charles, you or Lawrence, you had a Alright, so what's happening is the other music is still playing back from the scene zero. Well, that's because we have the event handler that's paying attention, and you can have more than one. We do. We have right here. When the game starts, when the game is active, activated, play the scary music, but we still have that one back on scene one. Even though we're not looking at it in this scene, all the code is always active, even if you're not on the same scene, usually, depending. So we have an active handler back on scene one, and that's why the music starts to play again from the home scene. So let's go back to scene one, home, and what we need to do is, okay, once we've passed the title screen, the home scene, stop paying attention to the music that could play back on the home scene. So that's how we're getting both of the soundtracks playing. 
we're going to say up on the go, go gate function, line 18, let's get us out of the scene 0 and take us to the gate and stop, play, stop paying attention to and stop playing the music on scene 0. So we'll say here, before we actually go, give yourself a line. See how it says go to and play. So before that, we need to remove the event handlers that activate the music. This will, will make it easy on ourselves. Copy the line of the event handler for the music, for the play home music. Copy that line and paste it inside of the go. Paste it at the go gate. And also copy the code about deactivating. Put both of those in there. Also copy and paste. Don't cut it. You want to copy it. So go back down and then select the line about deactivate and also paste it and what we need to change is instead of add event listener remove event listener stop paying attention to those types of events we only want to pay attention to um, the music once we're in the first scene. When we get past the first scene, we don't want to pay attention to the music anymore. So change those to remove event listener. And we'll make a note. Once we get past the gate, or once we get past the home scene, Stop paying attention to the whole music. Once we leave S0 home, stop paying attention to the music of S0 home. At this point, you can uh, try testing it. anymore. If I exit and restart, yeah, it should only be the main music, the scary music. If I go to the 
right hallway to to die and then I do play again when I do play again it goes back to the title but then the, the music stops there and we're, we're not quite there yet but um, that's what we need so far I think also by testing it a little bit more, we're going to see something odd as well up to this point. Let's see. Okay, so if I'm on the title screen, I go to help. Okay, great. The, the music is still playing. I'm on help. I press back. It stops. Okay, that's happening because we have on scene zero we have stop all we needed to do stop all we needed to set up our music in the channel and then stop it and then play it well that is preventing the music from from playing so to counteract that we need to change a little bit of the code on the help scene because remember this code runs from top to bottom we were on the help scene. We go back to the home scene so it processes the code again and it sees, oh, stop. So it stops the music. To counteract that, let's go to your help scene. We're going to change this a little bit here. In addition to taking us home, we're then going to also continue the the soundtrack. So we need the code. We can copy and paste from scenes, scene zero. We need the code from this play part. To, to save yourself some effort. From the play function, I'm going to copy the code that actually plays the music. Now I'm going to paste that in the function in the help scene that takes us back to the home scene. So we're saying, when we're in the help scene, we did this a while ago, when we're in the help scene, we're going to go back to scene zero when we're done looking at help. There's nothing helpful in the help scene at the moment, you'll put something nice there about the game or how to play. So once I go back to the home scene, I then also want to keep playing the main music, the home music, based on where the current music is at. To go ahead and test that, that should fix that issue that if you go to the home, if you go to the help scene and go back home, the music should continue to play. Yes. She's dealing with this weird issue with how to possibly undefined method playing through a reference to the static type class. And it's on the sound channel. Double click to show them. It looks 
I hear it over here, and when I go to the help screen, it's still playing, and go back, it starts over. That's fine. But it still plays again. Uh, it wasn't playing before. If I really wanted it to continue from where it was at under help, technically we're using, technically we're not refreshing the position. This pause is still set to zero. We've been on, we've been on the zero, scene zero, where it was originally set to zero. Um, and here we're using it again, but we haven't checked what it was. I guess it's pretty easy to reset what that is. Let's see, that should simply be doing this part. If we copy home muse pause dot position and use that under help, that should then redefine first where are we at in the music. And then use that when we get back to scene zero. That's should do that so that it doesn't start over. It's fine if it starts over, but I guess if we really want it to continue. Question? Yeah, let's let's try that. Let me check it on mine first. But that should then recheck what is the current music value position and use it to then set where we are in the music so that it doesn't So if I lose focus of my emulator, it also stops. If I do lose focus, even in my emulator, it still works. It might be nice to have different music here. I'm about to die, so we're going to change the music and then other music there too. Play again, and that's not playing just yet, but we're not there yet, so that's how it should be working so far. You see here why this is one of the last things we're doing, this, this concept of making the music play just right. It's not just about setting up the code to play the music at the right time. We need to deal with, okay, play this music at this time, stop the music if I exit, restart it, in essence, pausing it. But what happens when I go from scene to scene? So a lot of little things to keep track of as, um, as we go from scene to scene. So if that's working, we'll move on. Anyone stuck a little bit? All right, if it's working, uh, let's deal with changing our music when we get to the right hallway. At the moment, the right hallway is completely, you go that way, you're dead. But obviously you could figure out that something else happens. Maybe you could open one of those doors. We never set up those doors to be clickable. You could based on the knowledge we have. What I want is to scare the user, the player, that once you get to that right side, the music changes. Something's different. Music is often a cue in games, isn't it? You're playing, 
the music's playing a certain way, the, the music changes, and it changes your emotion and what's happening. So we're going to do a new sound on the right side, the right hall. Let's see what else we have. I think I want to do that one for the game over screen. Or maybe that one. Maybe this scary cello music. Is that going to scare you if you see the creature? No. No. Is this going to scare you? No. No? Okay. And we only have... What is intrigue again? It's not scary either. None of these are that scary anymore, but... Uh, it's well, we've already got It's Coming for the whole main music, for the other hallways. It's Coming is this one. And then 4 Dash. It's not scary at all either. Yeah, it should be faster. The background music for the monster should be faster. It's whole theme music, basically. Yeah, well, these ones that we have here... Uh, aren't fast or scary enough, that, but that's a good point. What was that over there? Like that, you know, because Resident Evil 2, when those big lippers show up, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So, we don't have a soundtrack that kind of fits with that style. That's okay, we're going to use one of the ones here. But this is when you would go to the YouTube Creator Studio and search a perfect soundtrack and add it to your game. So, we're going to use solo cello. It's not scary enough, but we'll use that one. So we need to first import it. File import to library. We'll select solo cello. In the library, it needs a name. We'll call it Muse. Or we'll call it Ghost Muse. So once I've imported solo cello, open that up, double click it, and go to Actions, Activate, Export, and we'll call this Ghost Muse, whatever your creature is. We're going to then copy and paste the code that makes the music happen on scene gate. Co we'll copy the whole chunk of that music and then just change a couple of things. Instead of it saying scary muse, etc., etc., it'll start to say ghost muse, etc., etc. So set ghost muse. Go back to scene. Uh, scene gate. Where, where was it? No, uh, scene. Uh, We're going to do this for hallway right first. But what we need is the whole chunk of code that sets up our music. We're going to need this stop mixer. I can't select that also, but we're going to need that as well. We'll copy all of the stuff that makes the music happen back from the gate scene. Copy that, and we'll paste it into hallway right. And then don't forget sound mixer stop all. We'll copy all of that. We'll go to hallway right. I'll paste it at the end. And I want to get back the stop all. And put it in the same place at the very beginning. I did a lot of copy and paste, but it should make sense what I did. I um, put the stop all at the beginning and put that. Then that's going to be ghost muse, ghost underscore muse, new ghost underscore muse, etc. This is how we're setting different music on different scenes if we want it.
right, so these are need, need to be changed. Ghost Muse. Exactly. Don't forget also where we've got these functions. Function play ghost music. Function play ghost music. That's it. Remember where that it says scary, change it to ghost. And mind your capitalization. It might work better on the game over, yeah. All right, so that that works, but it might be better on different um, different scenes. Yeah. Now, also, uh, okay, I didn't quite notice this, but I had put this code on frame twenty-five. It should have gone on frame one. There's still some of the music playing from the previous scene, and then the scene changes. I, the music changes. I think I want that to change right away. So, whoops, we should have put that on frame one. You might have, I, I didn't notice. That's an easy fix. So instead of it being on frame one, because I only saw this, I, I didn't pay attention that it was a 25. Uh, we need to move all of this. I've set it properly, so I need to move that stop all and the rest. I, I want the growling to start here, but I want all of that to be moved. I want to cut and paste it and move it to frame one of this scene, hallway right. So we'll cut that. Frame one of the hallway. I realized that after I played it, it's, it looked like it didn't play fast enough. So I'm cutting all of that and I'm putting it on a frame one. Frame one of the right hallway. So now that's what it should look like. Frame one has got all the music stuff. We've changed the scene. Start the, new, start the new music. Stop the old music, start the new music. Then start to play the music of growling and all of that, and the animation of the, of the ghost coming at us, and then game over.
Yeah, I think that's better. It changes right away. All right, so all of that uh, was moved over to frame one of the right hallway. Okay, I guess then we can use Intrigue as the final good soundtrack. Let's say they went through the left side and they did other things and then they're going to the ending. They got a good ending. They, met, they went past the spike room. We will use Intrigue as the good ending music. So we'll do something very similar. We're going to import that give it linkage with some name, copy the code that already worked, and just change it to be good ending muse, or good muse or something. So we'll do that in just one moment. All right, so let's import the Intrigue soundtrack, file import to library. We'll use Intrigue, Intrigue needs to have action script linkage, we'll call this good ending muse.
getting ready to leave the cold. I'm cold. Good ending muse. So I'll copy that. And I need an example of the code that works from a previous scene so I can put it on the good ending scene. Uh, basically, all of the code here on frame one of hallway, hallway right is what I need. So I'll copy all of that code. All of this code makes it work, so copy all of the code from the hallway right and we'll put this into the good ending. I'll paste it in. But I need the stop all as one of the first things, so we'll put that at the top. What was previously there were a couple of event handlers for the buttons. The quit button and the play again button. Well, I don't see function go quit and function go play again. Those we created in the bad ending. This is what I'm saying, that basically your code, wherever you create it, you can use it anywhere else in the app. We've been kind of thinking about it in a very linear way in that this scene has this action script, and that works just fine. But one step outside of the box is, a, is code that I made on scene one can be used in, in scene 40. And that's what's happening here. We created the go quit and the play again on the bad ending. We did the bad ending first. But we did have to uniquely have a different instance name for the clickable items. And these activate the same quit and play again, defined on the bad ending. So that'll be important in a moment because, again, when we get to the good ending and we start over, the music stops. We need to get the music playing again. Well, we're going to eventually need to rewrite a little bit the go play again function, which is in the bad ending. We'll do that in a moment. So we've got good ending muse to work with. All of these are going to be changed. Good ending muse equal to good ending underscore muse. Good ending. Good ending muse play. Good muse dot play. Good ending muse pause function play good ending. I'm doing a little copy and paste there. Saves me a little bit of effort. And good ending muse play is equal to good ending muse dot play at the position of good ending muse pause and then if we deactivate from this scene the point of this is again a person may be at the good ending and exits the game without pressing exit they just you know press the home button the the good ending would keep playing as we've seen in other examples so we do have to keep track of all of that to stop playing that music when it's not necessary Get the idea of what you need to change. Go ahead and change it. hallway. I'll go directly to the good ending. So there's the other sound. Obviously if I quit it quits. If I play again it doesn't play the music which we'll fix in a moment. If we go to help go back it plays the music. So this is what I'm getting at. It's We, we didn't reactivate the music so we'll have to reactivate the music once we once we get to the good or the bad ending. If I go to the bad ending, the same thing happens. 
this changes I die if I start over this song is playing here when I start over well, there was that stop all that is preventing it to, to play so we'll need to fix that Now here I'm just trying to try a couple of ways to see how best this would work. Maybe we just simply reactivate the event listeners instead of replaying the sound. Let's see which of these two works better. So it looks like in order for the music to play again after you restart the game, you want to go to the bad scene because that's where we've got where we've set up our function go quit and function play again. So we set it up in one of the scenes, but we reuse it elsewhere. Function play again, we've used it in the good ending and the bad ending. We're changing the play again function like this. We can copy and paste this, but this seems to get it to work just fine. It um, it plays the music again 
from the beginning, which would make sense. We're back on the home scene, uh, play the music from the beginning. note there is just that uh, we need to play the music again when we start over. So I think overall uh, it should work how I envision. Let's take a let's take a short break. We'll do a couple more things and then we'll start to talk about what the homework is. Uh, it's about 11.40. We'll take a break until 11.50. When we come back, I'll give you a copy of my code. We'll help you out and then talk about also what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. 